We're going to continue talking about membranes today, which is topic 2.4 for cells. Um, already you should have drawn a membrane and labeled the parts and found out about some of the functions of the different membrane proteins. Um, but today we're going to talk a little bit more specifically about those proteins. 2.4.3 asks us to list the functions of membrane proteins, and so we're going to do that now. I want to begin with um, peripheral proteins, and peripheral proteins are proteins that are found either on the outside of the cellular membrane or on the inside of the cellular membrane. So they don't span that lipid bilayer, but they are loosely attached to the outer surface. Um, so some of the functions of those peripheral proteins include hormone binding sites and so this most likely would be a peripheral protein on the outside of the cell. Um, chemicals known as hormones would be sent through the bloodstream and these would provide a site for that hormone to bind to which would then cause a response within the cell. Um, so that's one function of an outside peripheral protein. A function of an inside peripheral protein would be to act as an immobilized enzyme. A lot of these proteins are enzymes, but when they are loosely attached to the cell membrane, they're immobilized or they're not being used at that time. And so um, they are basically stored on the membrane and available for reactions when needed. And an enzyme, remember, is just... Um, basically a biological catalyst, something that will speed up a rea reaction without requiring a higher temperature. Another function of a peripheral protein would be cell adhesion. Um, most likely this would be an outward peripheral protein, and so this would allow cells to physically attach to other cells or to attach to other structures, um, such as extracellular material. Um, and so these are going to be proteins that have, are capable of binding to something else in some way. Um, and then lastly for our peripheral proteins, we have a special type of protein called a glycoprotein. And glycoproteins are responsible for cell-to-cell -cell communication. Um, glycoprotein is basically a protein with a glycogen attached, and a glycogen is a carbohydrate chain, um, so a carbon chain. Um, and so basically they are on the outer surface of the cell and they allow cells that come in contact with one another to identify each other and in some ways communicate. So um, that is it for our peripheral proteins. And then lastly I want to talk about our integral proteins. Integral proteins are proteins that span the plasma membrane. So they go all the way across, all the way through the plasma membrane. And they can also be known as channel proteins. Channel proteins and integral proteins allow items to move from one side of the membrane to the other. And sometimes items will be able to move just straight through the plasma membrane, but if the molecule is too large to do that or has some kind of charge um, that it's not able to do that, it will need to move through an integral or channel protein. And this can happen both passively and actively. So if it's happening passively, what that means is that there is no energy required. And if it's happen happening actively, then energy is required in the form of ATP to move that molecule from one side of the membrane to the other. And so this could be both moving things from outside of the cell to the inside or vice versa, inside the cell to the outside. Okay, our next assessment statement, 2.4.4, asks us to define diffusion and osmosis. And diffusion and osmosis are both types of movement for different molecules. Um, so we're going to start with diffusion. Um, diffusion is the passive movement, passive meaning no energy required, of particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. And diffusion can refer to any molecule. So one really common example is um, perfume. If someone sprays perfume at their locker and you're a few lockers down, you may not smell it immediately, but eventually it will move or diffuse from that area of high concentration to the area of lower concentration, so it will make its way to your locker. Um, 
So diffusion, if you look at the diagram here, when we talk about cells, we're going to be talking about diffusion of molecules through the plasma membrane or that lipid bilayer there. And so in this diagram, we've got our area of high concentration here, um, and this is our area of low concentration. And just some vocab for you, the area of high concentration is known as the source. This is the source that diffusion is occurring from. And the low concentration area is known as the sink. So this is where the molecule will be moving to. Now, what we have here is called a concentration gradient because we've got an area of low and we've got an area of high. So there is a difference between these two or a gradient. If we go to the next area on this diagram, we see that the molecule is small enough to move through the lipid bilayer. It does not require a channel protein. And it's going to be moving from this area of high concentration to the area of low concentration. So it's moving with that concentration gradient. Now, given enough time, we're going to reach an equilibrium. So there's going to be um, an equal amount of the item from one side of the membrane to the other. At this point, movement across the concentration gradient will stop because the concentration gradient no longer exists. However, molecules will still be moving back and forth through the membrane, maintaining this equilibrium throughout. The next thing we need to discuss is osmosis. And osmosis is similar to diffusion. It follows some of the same rules. But in this case, it is the passive movement of water molecules. So when you talk about osmosis, you are specifically talking about water, where diffusion, like I said, can refer to any molecule. Um, and so in this case, it's a little bit more confusing, but it is the passive movement, so no energy, of water molecules from a le region of lower solute concentration to a region of higher concentration. And so basically what you need to know is a solute is something dissolved in water. So in this case, we've got a sucrose molecule dissolved in water. And sucrose is a type of sugar, basically. Um, so in this case, water is going to move to dilute the sucrose. So if you look at the diagram here, we see that we've got our membrane, um, which is semi-permeable. And as you can tell, it's going to be large enough for water to move through, but it's going to be too small for these sucrose molecules to move through. So the sucrose is trapped on this side. Um, water is going to diffuse, like I said, in order to dilute the sucrose. And so though water may go back and forth a little bit, the overwhelming flow of water is going to be in the direction of the sucrose. Um, and this happens in nature all the time. Um, if you put a cell, for example, in salt water, water is going to leave the cell to go and try and dilute that salt water. And so that's why oftentimes salt will kill um, living organisms or especially single-celled organisms because it's going to suck that water out of the cell um, as the water tries to dilute the solute. So just to reiterate, this is the movement of water only and it's going from a region of lower solute, so less stuff, to a region of higher solute, more stuff. And it's very important that you differentiate that because diffusion is moving from high concentration to low concentration, but osmosis is moving from less stuff to more stuff, and it's only the movement of water. So take a minute and just kind of figure that out in your mind and get those two straight. Okay, our last assessment statement for the day is 2.4.5, and it asks us to explain passive transport across membranes by simple diffusion and def facilitated diffusion. And so we know that passive transport is not going to require any energy, so that is very important for us to remember. No energy is needed. Um, and we may require some membrane proteins here. So let's start with the first one, simple diffusion. Um, simple diffusion implies that there is no expenditure of energy, and this is simply 
the molecule moving across the membrane. So in this case, no energy is needed, no protein is needed. This is a case where the molecule is small enough to simply move across the plasma membrane, so go through the lipid bilayer, and it's going to be driven by diffusion. So it's going to go from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Very simple, therefore it's called simple diffusion. The last category here for passive transport is facilitative diffusion, or facilitated. Um, this is where we have a larger molecule. Again, it's being driven simply by diffusion, so a higher area to a lower area of concentra concentration. And in this case, the molecule is too large, or it has a charge, which doesn't allow it to move through the lipid bilayer. And in this case, we're looking at potassium ions. Potassium ions are charged, and since we've got some charges within the lipid bilayer, they're not going to be able to move through. So this is going to require the use of a, pl uh, sorry, of a membrane protein, an integral protein. And it is driven by diffusion. We see that we've got a higher concentration of potassium here and a lower concentration here. So potassium will passively move from one side to the other. However, because of the charge, it will require a path. And so it's going to take this path through the channel protein to get to the outside of the cell. That's it for our um, assessment statements for today. Please be sure that you've got some good notes written down and questions to ask. Um, this symbol on the slide is indicating a video, which we will watch in class when you get back. Thanks.